Glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Brothers and sisters, we are in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1. And I do seize the occasion to share with you this Bible study tool, which is this website that allows us to have the King James Version's text, but also access to the Hebrew words and the Hebrew terms that were originally used for writing the scriptures before they were translated in English for the purposes of the King James Version translation. Even though sometimes we feel that we have a very good translation with the King James, it's good sometimes to go and see what the original Hebrew words were when we deal with the Old Covenant and the Greek words used for the New Covenant. And case in point, I'm going to illustrate how that is very useful uh, to get a better understanding of Scripture and to have a more profound understanding of things in the Scriptures because they are beautiful and rich in teachings. For instance, Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11. O Yahweh, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name. And prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cup-bearer. So I'm interested in this part here, thy servants who desire to fear thy name. Now, if we look at name in the Hebrew, we realize something very interesting. Not that it wouldn't be apparent in the English dictionary, but we have direct access here to the Hebrew for name, which is in the Hebrew shem, shem. And this reminds us of the name of uh, one of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japhet. So when we look at name, what I find interesting and fascinating, actually, is that the name is looked at from different perspectives. There are different aspects to a name. So if we read, we see that the name is an appellation as a mark or memorial of individuality. By implication, honor, authority, and character. So these three aspects, honor, authority, and character. And when I saw this, the Holy Spirit was teaching me about how all these different aspects, they also can be applied to the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that he has given us his name. So when we look at the honor aspect pertaining to the name, it reminds us that the Lord always stressed out the importance of giving honor to his name. For instance, if we go to Malachi chapter 1, I will be switching screens here. Here we go. Malachi chapter 1. In Malachi chapter 1, verse 6, we read, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? So this verse illustrates how a father will want to have honor and the Lord wants us to give him honor and to his name and not to despise his name. And so there is a reproach based on the lack of honor given to the name. And still in Malachi chapter 1, if we go to verse 11, we get the same idea. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, 
my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. So we see thereby that it is important for the Lord that we give honor to his name. And Malachi chapter 1 gives us a very good indication about that, and it's a great illustration about this principle. So I will be reverting back to the original screen where we have access to the Hebrew lexicon. Here we go. So we're back in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11. And I'm still going to examine name. We saw that there are three aspects to name, honor, authority, and character. We dealt with honor and went to Malachi chapter 1 to have an illustration about this. And now we'll move to the second aspect of a name, authority. And a very good example of that is in Philippians, obviously. I think we all know this passage in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so we see that there is authority attached to the name of Jesus so that it has to be respected and people have to bow to it. But not only people, but every host of heaven as well. And every host of the nether regions of the earth as well. Both angels, demons, and also humans. So there is authority attached to this name. And this is why also in Mark chapter 16, we read in verses 17 and 18, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. So it is through the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Yehoshua, that we have power to cast out devils because there is authority attached to the name of Yehoshua. And when we channel that authority through the power that is given us, we can cast out devils by way of the authority that we have by the power of the name of Yehoshua. Oh, that is magnificent. That is magnificent. This is confirmed in Luke chapter 10, verses 19 and 20. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So two things here. He gave us power, and he gave us power through his name, Yoshua. And also further, he says, the spirits are subject unto us because we also bear his name. So this, all of this represents authority, the way that we can bring to subjection, put in subjection, the demons more specifically in this case, and cast them out. All must bow before the name of Jesus Christ, because through his name we have power, and we've been given that power, so that we can bring all things in subjection. So this is the same aspect, the authority that is attached to the name of Jesus Christ. So we will get back now to Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11, so that we can examine the third aspect attached to a name. 
So looking at the definition of name, Shem in the Hebrew, the last attribute is character. So to a name, there is attached honor. We already saw that. Looking at Malachi chapter 1 and how the Lord was stressing out the importance of giving honor to his name. Second, there is authority. And we saw how the power that is in the name of Yoshua is such that it commands authority and establishes authority over demons and that all must bow before his name and that there's power given us to work through the power that is in the name of Yahushua. And lastly now, in a third instance, we look at character. And to look at character, we will go to another verse. So we're looking at character. So to the name of Yahushua, the name of Christ, is also attached a character that you must have, which is similar to the character of Christ. We look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus." who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So this is the character of Christ who humbled himself and served others, and was obedient even in sufferance. Now, we also have Romans chapter 13, verse 14, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Put on Christ, meaning have the same character that he had, and that is confirmed in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, he that saith he abideth in him, in Christ, ought also himself to walk even as he walked. He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. And so we must walk as Christ walked, with the same compassion, the same love that he demonstrated towards everyone. And so we put on Christ and have that character to humble ourselves. And so this illustrates this third aspect of a name where there is a character associated with it. So I think this is very interesting and very edifying. And I will be getting back to our original screen, which is the verse from which we started studying this. And that is Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11. Here we go. So we were looking at thy servants who desire to fear thy name. And we looked at name in the Hebrew. And we saw the definition and how to the name were attached three attributes, honor, authority, and character. As far as honor is concerned, we saw Malachi chapter 1, how the Lord said it was important to give honor to his name. We saw second, and with respect to authority, how there is power in the name of Yahshua, Jesus Christ, and how we have authority over the realm of darkness through his name, to which is attached great power, and he has given us that power. And lastly, third, we saw how there is a character attached to a name, and that we are called we who have received that name 
to have the same character as Christ, to walk as he walked, and to display the same nature, and that is having compassion towards others and displaying love because we put on Christ. Alleluia. So there you have it, brothers and sisters. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Starting from Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11, we looked at a name and how there are different attributes to a name, three of them here. And also we understood that this name in the Hebrew is Shem, Shem. And this reminds us of how Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japhet. But this is not the topic here, so we will keep it at that for now. May you all be blessed, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.